my YouTube friends. Today I have three more epic plugins to show you for OBS. We have something truly special for game streamers, something to make creating recorded content from your live streams an absolute breeze, and another one that adds zooms and amazing transitions to any scene or scene change. And of course, they're all totally free. So you know what? Let's get to it! Likes and comments are easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. This first one is really awesome for gamers. It allows your audience to see your actions on your controller, your keyboard, or your mouse or pretty much anything else. It's called Input Overlay. The Input Overlay is about the same as the others. The link to this page is down below in the description. And we're gonna go over here to the top right and select Go to Download. And it's gonna bring us up to GitHub right here. The assets are down here. And you can get this for a bunch of different platforms where you're obviously going to use the Windows 64-bit installation. But you also wanna make sure that you grab the Input Overlay presets. Once you've downloaded both of these you're just gonna flip over and extract each one so right click and extract and then I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on the executable click more info and run anyways Then I'm gonna just next through the entire install and click finished and now we're installed and you just want to make sure that you put the input overlay presets somewhere where you're going to be able to find it because you're gonna want that folder when we're setting this up the input overlay is really awesome for anyone who's going to be doing any kind of gaming it just adds that extra extra element people can actually see what you're doing we're just going to click the plus and we're going to go to input overlay we're going to call this keyboard and we're going to go ahead and browse you can see this is from the input overlay presets and they have all these different things that you can add from keyboards and mice and controllers and pretty much anything that you can think of, game pads, the whole nine yards. We're gonna go with the WASD, and we will just add this PNG in here. This gives you a preview of the type of things that you can select for it, and you'll see when we add this, it looks pretty horrible, but it's pretty simple stuff. All we're gonna do is add a configuration file. So you've got the full, if you wanted that, and that's what that looks like. It gives you the full QWERTY. Or what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the minimal. I like this a lot better. And there we go. So when we use these keys, you can see they light up yellow. Makes it really, really easy for your audience to see exactly what you're doing. Really cool. You can shrink it down, put it wherever you want on the screen. And now your audience can actually see you interacting with the game. If we wanted to add another one, we can easily do that. We'll just go in here, go to input overlay. This time we'll add a mouse and we'll click okay. All we have to do is go back in here and select the mouse input. And of course you can create your own, but you know, the steady ones work the same. You can see what these PNG image files are. So they're pretty simple. If you wanted to create one yourself, you can use either the arrow or the dot on the box in, in this file here. So this is the arrow one and this is the dot. And this one has no mouse movement shown at all. Let me show you what the um, arrow is here. So it just moves around when I move the mouse. And you can create a dead zone right here if you want. So it moves a little slower or whatever. It's just gonna kind of more easily show the direction. We can adjust our mouse sensitivity as well. And the other thing that we can do is use the dot method. This is kind of cool. So this dot will move around and show you what's going on. If we increase our mouse sensitivity, you can see the dot doesn't move quite as much. You get a happy medium between this and your mouse dead zone. And it definitely moves around more when you move your mouse faster and all that stuff. As you can see, we've got our scroll and all of our keys over here. Pretty awesome. Then you just shrink this down, put it wherever you want it on the screen. And now your audience sees your mouse inputs and it's pretty awesome. It's a much cooler way to show what you're doing and interact with your audience even more. This next one makes it super easy to parse out your live streams for easy editing into recorded content. Recorded content is such an awesome way to grow your channel you really need to be doing it as part of your channel growth strategy. Why not make that an easy 
easy process with the InfoWriter plugin. InfoWriter is an extremely simple install. Again, the links to get to this are in the description down below. What we're gonna do from this page is we're gonna go up to the top right and click here. It's going to quickly download a zip file. All we need to do is go into our downloads and right click on it and go ahead and extract it. This one's a little bit different in that it has 32-bit and 64-bit. Since I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows, I'm gonna grab that. And I just need to grab this DLL out of here by doing a copy. Then I need to go to my OBS-Studio directory. You're gonna notice when we open up OBS-Studio, there is a plugins folder. It's OBS-Plugins, we'll click on that. And you see there's a 32-bit and a 64-bit folder. So I'm going to go in the 64-bit folder and just paste in that DLL. And we are installed, it's really that simple. And the info writer is really easy to use as well. So we're gonna just click the plus, we're gonna go to info writer and click okay. You can add this to any scene, it does not really matter. Now you can choose between default, which is text, CSV, which is a CSV file, and EDL, which is actually something you can incorporate into some of the editors. So it'll actually parse it right out in your editor. You'll kind of have to do a little more research on this to see if your editor uses EDL. I generally just use default. This is the format for the time that they're going to use. Then you have to select the actual file that you wanna use or the file name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the base of our OBS folder here. And we're just gonna call this log file and we're gonna save it. Now this is where you're gonna put the text for your hotkeys so that you remember what they are. So you can easily put you know, gag reel here, and you can put keep here or whatever, if maybe a uh, hot kill, whatever you might be wanting to parse out. Then down here, you can have it log when you change scenes or any of these other things. Pretty simple stuff. So what we're gonna do is click OK. We're gonna go over here into settings and go into our hotkeys. And we're gonna find those hotkeys that we just kind of set up. Here it is, Info Writer. We know our hotkey one was our gag reel. So we'll just make that a G. Two was another thing. And three hotkey was our kills or whatever. So we'll make that a K. And there we go. So now we've got that in there and let's just verify that that's actually how we had it set up yep there we go keep and hot kill very good so now we can go live or start recording in my case i'm just going to start recording so i can show you what sort of output you get from this so we'll click start recording and we'll use some of our hot keys we'll hit the p key and the k key and you know all that kind of stuff we'll just use some hot keys and see how this works we're going to stop recording and we're going to go check out what our log file says. So we're going to go into the proper thing. We got our log file here and we can open it with our notepad. And here we go. So now we can see that this records the start, gives you the timestamp right here. We've got our hotkey, hotkeys named keep, and it gives us, uh, and this happened at four seconds. So it tells you that it was a hot key for keep. And we got a hot kill at seven seconds. So it makes it really easy to find these points just by clicking a simple hot key. And then when you're editing it up later, you go to seven seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Obviously, it's not gonna, this is just for an example, but it's gonna make it really easy for you to find the points in your stream that you wanted to cut out. It's super easy to set up, it's totally free. And if you're looking to create video content from your live streams, which you should be, it's really a must have. It's awesome. This next plugin is a little bit older and it's probably one of my favorites. It's called the Move Transition plugin and it allows you to move all kinds of assets all over the screen through transitions or even just within one scene. It's absolutely amazing. Here we are in the install page for the Move Transition. And the version that I'm installing is 2.2.1. Yours may be newer, but they should work the same. And if I scroll down here, there are some instructions on how this works. We're just gonna click the download in the top right. And you can download the Windows installer, the Windows zip file, or the Mac OS install. And of course there's one for Linux here as well. I'm just gonna download the Windows installer. It is the easiest to put on. And once I put it on the machine, I just double click and I install it. This will come up on Windows. 
You can click here and click run anyway. And it's just gonna come up to install. It'll ask you where the location is for your OBS. You just wanna make sure that you give it the correct location and then just click next through the install and you should have the move install completed. Here we are in OBS and I'm just going to set up a simple scene. This is my main camera. I'm going to crop it using the alt and dragging the edges here to make this box a little more tight and we'll resize it just a little bit. Then I'm going to go click the plus under sources for this scene and I'm going to add a media source and I think I'll just call this media one and click OK. Now I'm going to browse to a file that's on my computer that's just a video file. Now this doesn't have to be a video file this could be anything it could be a guest screen or it could be some sort of tutorial you're doing any input will work on this now I'm gonna resize this and we'll put it over here We'll resize this and move it into place and that looks pretty good so now we have our first scene set up we're gonna go into scene two and you can see my video capture device already has my camera in here and I'm just gonna place this somewhere on the screen and I'm gonna go to plus and I'm gonna add that same media source in there media one the one we just created and I'll resize that and place it wherever I want on the screen here and now I'm gonna add another media source once I get these windows organized I'm gonna click the plus and go to media source I'm gonna call this one media two and click OK Okay, I'm just gonna load another video file in here. And like I said, these don't have to be media sources. They can literally be any source that is visible. Now I'm going to resize this and we'll just place it up here. And there we go. So now we have two different scenes, one with two sources and one with three sources. Two of the three sources are the same in both scenes. So now I'm gonna click transitions and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna add a move. And I'm gonna click okay. And it brings up this properties for move box. This top box is where we determine how move transition identifies the sources that we wanna move. In this case, the sources all contain the same source name. So I'm going to select contains the same source name. Here you can cache the transitions. So if you have a lot of movement or something that it can remember it and move it faster, you can change the switch point. And that's the point that the transition actually occurs. Since this is kind of a unique transition, I don't really worry about it too much. Here you can change the way that your objects move on the screen, ease in, ease out, or just ease in and out, or none and you can make sure that the transition scale type and all that stuff is to your needs. And then there's the curve for the way that your objects are going to move around the screen and you can adjust that. Now we're gonna to move to appearing items. And this is going to be how items that are going to appear on your screen are going to come in. And I'm gonna change the position to the right because that's where the box we're moving in comes from. And you can adjust the type of transition that you wanna move. I'm just going to keep none here. And then disappearing items. How do you want your items to disappear out of the screen? In my case, once again, we have that item on the right and I want it to disappear to the right. So I'm just going to select the position as right and we can preview that and you can see it A switches to B by disappearing off the page to the right. So how is this going to work? Well, let's click OK. And here we have our first scene. If I switch to the second scene, you can see that that third box will just pop in from the right and the other two boxes move seamlessly from one position to the next. It's, I mean, how cool is that? This is just an amazing thing that you can do with live guests or something like that. I mean, you can basically move from one scene to another just rearranging your assets. This can add so many cool features. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rearrange these boxes here again and I'm gonna add that third video element in here that we already added in the other scene so I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to media source and I'm just gonna add media to and I'm gonna shrink this down and place it down here and there we go I'm gonna readjust the size of this box and there we go so now we don't have any items disappearing or reappearing on the screen, what it will do is just reorganize those boxes and reshape and resize them depending upon where they are in each scene. And it moves completely seamless from one scene to the other. How cool is that? Now this is a really cool aspect of the move transition. And what it means is, as you can see on the screen, I have a background that might be part of a tutorial. And then I have my image on the screen as well, down in the bottom left hand corner. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of crop my image down here a little bit, but you could see these are both individual images. Now what I wanna do is I wanna 
right click on my scene and go to filters. Now I'm gonna click the plus at the bottom and I'm gonna to go to move source. And I'm gonna call this one move source space LL for lower left, which is the position of my camera. Then I'm gonna click okay. I'm going to select the source here in the properties window. In this case, it's my video capture device. Then I'm gonna scroll down here and you can see you can change the way this stuff moves as well, but I'm just gonna to go to the transform here and I'm gonna get the transform. And this applies the location and the way that the box is laid out to everything. And all this stuff, the actions down here, you can change these, but I'm going to control this with hotkeys. So I don't need to change anything here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the plus again and go to move source. And now I'm going to move source and we're gonna call this LR for lower right and click okay. Now I'm going to take my video window and I'm going to move this over to the right hand side of the screen, lower right. And I'm going to make sure that I have my source selected in this case, it's my video capture device. Then I'm gonna scroll down to transform and I'm gonna click get transform. So now it has the coordinates for my camera and the crop and everything. Next, I'm gonna click the plus and once again, I'm going to add a move source. This one I'm gonna call move source and it's going to be UR for upper right. Click OK. Under source, I'm gonna grab my video capture device. Scroll down to transform. Now I'm going to actually move my video window up to the top right and click get transform. So now it has the location of that window. And then I'm gonna click the plus and add another move source. And this time it's going to be UL or upper left. I'm gonna move it to the proper location on the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the correct source. And I'm going to hit that get transform again. And I wanna do one more of these. And the reason why is because because I want to show you that these will work even if you re-transform your window. In other words, you change the size or you adjust the crop. So I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna click that plus once again and go to move source. And this one I'm gonna call middle and click okay. Now I'm gonna select my video capture device as my source and I'm gonna go over here to the right. I'm gonna click alt and drag these out so my window is no longer cropped. And then I'm just gonna resize it to the center of the screen here. And you can see you can adjust and resize it any way you want. I'm gonna move it into the center of the screen and that looks all right. I'm gonna scroll down here and click get transform. So now that's locked in and I'm gonna click close. Now we have all the spots we want our camera to move. We're gonna go down here to settings and we're going to go to hotkeys. Now all I need to do is scroll down and find those filter entries. And of course we're working in scene so they're right here. And I'm going to select each one and assign a hotkey to it. And I just do this on the number pad with uh, keys that actually represent those locations makes it pretty easy. Once I do that, I click apply. And now when I go out, when I click those hotkeys, you can see my camera moving around the screen in a really smooth, cool fashion. And you can select any hotkeys you want to move your camera around the screen. And it doesn't just have to be a camera. It can be literally any scene object. How cool is that? If you wanna see a game-changing plugin that allows you to put assets over top of any scene, you should check this video out. Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links in the description below under the heading Sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.